front of the out range, so that's a priority result, and the bottom one is going into range, and therefore it's not a priority result. Although, in the first case, the current priority result is within the accepted range, and in the other case, it's outside. So if we look at some... Uh, so here, um, we used a number of different imputation strategies. We, we used mean, mean um, but the bottom there we are adding. We used mean, medium, mode, zero, and we found that actually the padding worked well. This is the, um, the RNN only for the padding. So uh, padding and masking gave the best results. Got another table. And so comparatively here, at the bottom, we have the point-based approach. Um, you'll recall that we didn't have the three-level prioritization for that. So that's why I've written the precision as that. Um, then going up, we have the KNN approach, the LSTM-based approach, um, and then the one the current idea, doing the prediction with padding and masking. So we try, we're starting to get um, uh, improvements. For the idea two, we went back and um, did the three level prioritization. And we were getting a steady improvement from one idea to another. So can we have idea four? Is it idea four next? Yeah. So idea four, now at this point, COVID has started to, uh, to go away. So we now had um, uh, the possibility of perhaps talking to doctors. So what we thought is that we would get a small number of pathology examples give them to doctors, and we got hold of six different doctors uh, for them to label. And then use that as a seed set to grow a much larger training set. The first thing that we noticed was that the doctors quite often didn't agree with each other. So there was no, uh, uh, we got 30 examples, I don't think we had a single example where all the doctors had read it as a priority result. So that's kind of interesting as well. And that's probably what you would expect. I did say this to um, the data manager, he wasn't surprised at all. So given the small seed set, and actually I've just had an, another idea here, I'll, go, I'll get back to that. Um, if we took we took 40 examples almost at random, 10 of what we thought was high priority from the previous tests, 10 of medium priority, and 10 of low priority, what we thought that was. Uh, and then once we got the seed data, we got, we used different augmentation techniques. I don't know how familiar you are with augmentation techniques. Smoked is probably the most well-known uh, to experiment with. And again, we use the proxy ground truth as the evaluation set because we didn't have enough information to do any more. So can we just... Uh... So here are the results uh, for, for which augmentation techniques use. Smoke seems to be the best synthetic minority oversampling technique. There are lots of different variations of smoke, actually. I can't remember which variation to use. We have another. So now we have idea four, uh, and that is using a seed set. And you can see that this gives the best results. Uh, of all slowly going up with, with accuracy. And it's quite a nice story. So for the PhD students, there are four ideas, four different chapters. She's got a really nice story to tell. Another, another slide. Now, 
just before I go on to the conclusions, I've just thought of something. The way that we selected the seed sets, where we what we should have done is we should have gone back to the clustering, just thinking aloud now. We should have gone back to the clustering and taken one example from each cluster and got the doctors to do that. I've only just thought of that, so we haven't done that. So we have this, in conclusion, we have this interesting problem where starting from a misunderstanding by the data manager about the need for training data and a data manager who believed the AI would produce training data. And we've got four ideas. The first one was this idea of looking from anomalies to data. We looked at the point-based technique and the time series-based technique. The intuition was that time series would be better because it takes the patient history into account and the results demonstrated that indeed, indeed that was the case. Then we had this idea of using the proxy ground truth, the idea of looking at a data set of where the patients ended up and predicting what would happen to the patients and using that prediction for prioritization. And we use two uh, time series analysis and techniques for this, a KNN one, because these, that's what's normally used in time series analysis, has been for about 20 years, and a much more modern RNN, and the RNN uh, produced better results, although we did have to use uh, some planning. The third idea was to try and predict what the next value in the sequence would be, and then use that prediction to label the penultimate value according to some idea of priority. And again, we used uh, the RNN here, and that worked better than the previous two ideas. And then the last idea was this idea of using a small seed set and augmenting this with a number of different uh, augmentation techniques, and arguably, Smoke seemed to work the best, and this seed set idea, the augmentation idea, produced the best overall results from the four ideas. Can we? This one, last slide. Is that the last one? Yeah, last slide. Oh, good. So, <laughs> okay, so I don't know whether anybody has any thoughts on other ideas for having to do this. A possibility is to do a statistical analysis, look at the normal range, and maybe look at standard deviations, and if something's within one standard deviation, it's okay. If it's within two, it's a medium priority, and if it's three, it's a high priority. And we did talk about doing that right at the beginning. We never did it, um, partly because the PhD student didn't believe in it, and partly because we had all these other ideas. Uh, and I think in the thesis, if you just have time, we'll just put it down as future work. Because you can always do that trick. If there's something in a PhD that you should have done, but I haven't done, you put it in as future work. So any... Uh, it, I mean, I've been thinking about this now for two years, so I don't expect that anybody must have some flat of inspiration to but, um, that's something that I haven't thought of. But any comments? You don't have to have uh, Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Franz. Uh, any question from our colleague? A question. Okay, so thank you for the right. first approach, we use clustering. Yeah. Okay, and then you said the outlier may form their own cluster. If we have, so so with DB scan noise, the outliers get put to one side and we capture those. Okay. But if we had a lot of priority pathology results that had similar characteristics, it would think, oh, this isn't noise, these are quite common, we'll put them all into a cluster, 
Okay. And then, uh, of course, we would never try. So, so that would be a criticism of that. that so how do you classify them um, based on the membership of a cluster? So we get a new result and we try and fit it into one of the clustering features. Okay. And if it doesn't fit into the clusters, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a high priority. High priority. And what we can do then, if it doesn't fit in the cluster, we can measure the distance from the priority results to the near the nearest centroid, and we could give it a number, a rank. We so didn't we didn't actually do that, but we could we could do what that. is k? Sir? Uh, what is the k value, the number of clusters? The the, the, the uh, optimum number of clusters. Oh, oh so um, so with DB scan you don't it you don't have, have to specify k. Yeah, because it, it, it decides yeah. on its own. If you used uh, k means you would have to, uh, I don't like K-means, but um, you wouldn't have to specify the number of clusters. And it's always a problem on how, on what K is. There's various algorithms that, that, and then it's been K, but... The second one is using time series. Yeah, clustering the time models. Clustering the time series. So based on the distance of all the points, Measure the accumulative distance and then. So that would, that would be one way of doing it. That's kind of the Euclidean distance time series measurement. But the time series have to be the same length. Okay. Yeah. So instead, we use dynamic time warping, okay. which compares every point in one plus one time series to every point in the other time series. So it's much more expensive. Uh, but that takes into account whether the time series are offset. And what you get is a matrix of distances. And then the, if the two time series are identical, the lowest values are the one with the leading diagonal of the matrix. If they're not identical, then the lowest values will be some way away from the leading diagonal. Okay. So the further, oh, it's called a path through the matrix. And if the warping path, but if the warping path is a long way away from the leading diagonal, then we have two very different type series. Okay. So if they are different, means that um, for a new unseen data, they are considered uh, not. If they're not an so we get a new time series. Okay. We can bear with the centroids that we have. Okay. If if we. Oh, wait, if, it's, if it's if it's way from that by some threshold, the, the threshold that DB scan uses, okay. uh, then uh, it becomes an anomalous record and it becomes a priority record. So the third one, uh, yeah. the prediction, the prediction for the next value. So it, um, depending on the outcome, whether they're within the range or outside the range, yeah. then you will. Decide how uh, what is the, the output of the classification. So if if it's outside of the range, then we can measure how far it's outside of the range, and we can then have a ranking. But what we actually did we used the threshold to have a high, medium, low classification. So the low is it's within range, it's predicted. And the other two are how far away it is from the So it's that so the it's it's not the location of the current pathology value, it's what we think the next one is going to be. And the fourth one? That's the seed set. Oh yeah. Um just um just take a small sample and then and grow it. Yeah, grow it. Okay. So, so I by perturbating the data using, using uh, these different techniques, we try and create a much bigger data set uh, from the from the small set. Now, another criticism might be that we started with a very small seed set, only 30 records, because we couldn't get it. So if we had more, and if we had a better seed set, which I've only just thought of, um, Maybe we shouldn't have chosen the examples of random, but chosen examples 
that are more spread. So if we clustered the data again, and if we had 30 clusters, we can take one example from each cluster, and we might have a much better spread of examples than what we actually did. That's something that's sort of, I don't know whether the student has time to do. So I think we'll put that down in this future. But she won't be very pleased if I now say, to, oh, I've just thought something out. <laughs> and another one more year. Yeah, she's got one year left. Yeah. Right, so she's writing in the class. Yeah, she's writing up there. So she's written the introduction. But all of this can be combined to become a sample classifier. Oh, that's an interesting idea. That's an interesting idea. And what would happen then? <laughs> yeah. That's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I'll remember that. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. There's different, yeah, approach will give you different results. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get them? That's a really good idea. Working mechanism. <laughs> but a lot of work needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, I think it might be future work as well, but yeah. it's, that's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If it's worth it just for that, that, that single idea. <laughs> I was trying to understand. Yeah, yeah, I'm on that a little pearl of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. It's okay. Uh, any more questions? Razali? Yeah. Uh, sorry, um, interesting. Uh, this is a small data set, is it? It's very small, is it? Um, well, there's 3,700 3, patients mm -hmm. and, and uh, is it half a million records? Um, yeah, so I suppose uh, these days you might say it's small. Can't count it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's half a million records. Yes. I mean, half a million million records. records. And uh, 3,700 3, patients. Yeah, um, which, which I think I would agree with you that in modern times, that is not a very large data set. But it's not a small data set. It's thousand is quite a Yeah. But um, since there is a small, um, but the is it the problem of imbalances? Imbalance. What's the uh, mean? Oh. The so it is it is imbalanced in the sense that there are less emergency patients than outpatients, and there are less outpatients. Uh, sorry, less emergency patients than inpatients, and less inpatients than outpatients. Um, it's not seriously unbalanced, but there is. They're not, it's not balanced, and we didn't take that into account. So we didn't do any augmentation to play with the proxy data set uh, so that it would be balanced. Yeah, we, um, and that might make a difference. You see that the, the using the small uh, all, what kind of small version that they do it? Okay, I can't remember, is the honest answer. I could find out. I, I, we actually looked at three different smoke variations. I could find out, but yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, because it's um, 13 or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, the variation is more than you can also. Yeah, we used the original smokes, but we also looked at uh, the support vector machine smokes, and what's another one? We looked at three, but we used the, the simplest one. What is the geometric smoke in the... Mm. Yeah. It's uh, better than the yeah. original smoke. So maybe um, interesting to see the, how is it. Instead of this is synthetic. Yes, yeah, so we should look at four different ones. Um, we only looked at one variation. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Any more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there is any concept from the 
permission to tell the company that that. So we didn't take the, but it's very hard to get hold of the clinicians. Yeah, it, it, it was a real effort to get 30 of them, uh, 30 examples labeled by six different clinicians. So we never took the augmented data examples back to the clinicians, mostly just for the challenge of getting hold of these people. It's, uh, I mean, we were having email exchanges. And we did think about uh, using medical students. And we thought that we could, um, we could um, ask medical students to do labeling. And we might have to give them a book to or something. Uh, and we also thought about crowdsourcing. We could perhaps do crowdsourcing to try and get people to label this data. But it requires expertise. So we would need to get a lot of medical students uh, to do it. And that just seemed like such a huge headache that we, we never went down that road. But we couldn't do crowdsourcing through mechanical turf or something like that because nobody has the expertise out there. So um, no, we, didn't, didn't, we didn't take the data back to the clinician simply because we just haven't, they haven't got the resource to look at. I mean, it is it, the, the whole the whole project is kind of around the idea of not having a a ground truth and not having any ability to get that. Good, good point. Okay, any more question from KK? So maybe from a clip from Lab One. Any question from uh, Lab One campus? Yeah, the touch area. Thank you, bro. Okay. okay. So, uh, you're trying to optimize the uh, KN or LSD. We didn't optimize the, I'm not sure how you optimize the KNN actually. Yeah. Um, KNN is what it is. There are no, there are no parameters in there. And so uh, we use the voting system. But, um, uh, the LSTM, we, LSTM was optimized using a grid search. So, so yes. Or RNN as well. Yeah, grid search. Because I know that there are readers fit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do have to have it. In, in fact, uh, yeah, we spent quite a long time playing with the RNA to get the right parameters. And it's, it is computationally expensive to do grid searches, but you're doing the same exercise again and again and again to get to your best parameters. So that's what that's, that's what we do. Okay. Okay. Uh, any more question? Thank you for the ensemble idea. That's, that, that's a simple idea. But simple ideas are always good ideas. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, if no more question, uh, thank you very much for, mm -hmm. for a very nice uh, presentation. Indeed, it is a new knowledge, I think, for a mentor, right?